Um, I'm very pleased to introduce Joanna Kleinberg, who is the assistant curator of the Drawing Center and the curator of this program. Um, I do want to advise everyone to please watch under their feet because there are objects that are on the floor and they're sort of diminutive, so just be aware of that and feel free to come all the way into the room. <laughs> so, yes, um, just introduce the exhibition Out of Place, curated by Joanna Kleinberg, featuring uh, Tracy Goodman, who is present with us tonight, and Valerie Snowback, who is not present with us tonight. So, with further ado, we're going to have kind of a conversation and kind of walk around the space. So, thank you very thank much. Thank you ladies. very much, Madam. You're welcome. Um, so, I live in New York and um, was asked by the director here to do an exhibition in this space, and I immediately, because I work with drawings all the time, wanted to do something a little bit out of my comfort zone, uh, and work with site-specific artists. And Tracy is the perfect person, so I've asked her to, to come here and sort of come visit Miami on a first-time basis. She came in October and basically envisioned her impressions of the city and what she took away with that. And the same with this artist, um, Valerie, as well. I asked her to come down at a separate time and um, recreate what she thought was her, the essence of this city. And Miami, as you all know, is such a specific flavor and, and culture and vibe that I thought it was the perfect time to introduce this notion of site specificity. So I guess Tracy's going to sort of walk around and show you this piece, and then I'll, I'll also describe Valerie's piece in, in more detail. Um, but as the show sort of entails the idea of out of place, so things being a little bit is it or isn't it, and uh, a mixture of domesticity and exteriority and uh, the sort of the domestic and uh, natural environment. So with that, I'll leave it to the creator. Hi, I'm Tracy. So um, when I first came down here in uh, October, um, I was sort of uh, struck with um, the natural environment, the all the all the foliage, and it's sort of like a jungle down here. From coming from the north, it's not like that up there at all. Um, so I wanted to um, have the trees sort of growing through the walls, and then also I noticed that the wall behind this wall was brick. So I wanted there to be <clears throat> kind of like a window, but a window to nothing, um, exposed to the brick wall behind the. Um, the she brought, and um, so that was my original question. And then I, I wanted there to be a sculptural element. So, so it's sort of like the exterior environment growing into the into the domestic space. So this is sort of the domestic element. These two little elves, they're salt and pepper shakers. They, I bought them a while ago, but they, I think they might have reminded me of Miami um, a little bit. Uh, and so I knew I wanted to embed them in this table and that would be part of the sculpture. And at some point I decided there sh the table should be pink. And then I, a friend of mine got the Miami Herald for me and I painted that pink as well. And, um, and then the gum, the component of the, the gum entered the piece kind of late. Um, I had seen a show in New York uh, where the person had um, put scat all over the floor. Um, it was cast, but... Uh, so I kind of wanted to include that element of the sort of dirtiness, but also being beautiful. Um, so I cast, I was chewing a lot of gum at the time. So. And the curator also happens to chew an excessive amount of gum, so it just kind of works, but anyway. Yeah. She packs with her trip. She yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I started casting the, the gum. So the gum in the corner is real, and then all the rest of this gum is I had like 17 molds going, and um, so I love the sort of dirtiness of you know having the imprint of my teeth, uh, you know, all over the floor. <laughs> um, so in the the flowers kind of worked out really nice too with this natural element, and then the this other sort of natural unnatural element. So so yeah. Um, okay, and if you just want to come over here closely, like this is. Um, Mallory Snowbeck's piece, who's also an artist that's based in New York City. And um, as I mentioned before, you know, she, she came to Miami for a visit. And what she noticed actually, and this is a much sort of more sort of conceptual take than, than Tracy's piece, is um, the ocean front. So she really walked along the beaches a lot. So what you're actually seeing is the dimensions of this plinth, this very low plinth, the dimensions of a, um, they're called ostrich chairs. They're the sort of disposable, um, collapsible beach chairs that you often see. Um, especially in Miami, that people sort of take and put on their backs. So the, that, these are the dimensions of it when it's opened. 
And um, the drawing that she's made is actually handmade paper that's made from plastic laminate. From she often incorporates photography in her work, so it's the um, the plastic laminate that she's used to create the paper pulp. And what's really interesting about this piece is I don't know if you, any of you know this, but about 80% of beach debris is made up of plastic. So what you notice again is this idea of the unnatural invading sort of the natural landscape. So it's quite similar in many ways to what Tracy was doing. Again, you know the combination of domestic and the and sort of the exterior natural landscape. Um, so it's a, a totally different sort of take on that. And I liked uh, just this complete visual contrast between both impressions of what uh, Miami can be. And I did want to just ask Tracy, because I think it's very interesting, the title of the piece and, and how uh, that sort of uh, is reflected in, in the visual output. So the title of my piece is um there's a long time in me between knowing and telling, and it's a Grace Paley quote. And I often choose quotes from um, literature. Um, this particular quote, or, I mean, I often choose quotes from literature because it really captivates my imagination in a way that art making does as well. Um, I often look more to literature than I do probably even to visual art it is for inspiration. Um, and. This particular piece, Grace Pelly, if you've ever read anything she's written, um, she writes about immigrants and um, the, the, I would say like her writing is almost, uh, it's like there's a long time in between knowing and telling. It's like the words are kind of in the wrong places. So it's, it's very poetic to me. Um, and so she writes about immigrants and about sort of, um, the dirtier, grittier side of life, and I grew up in a family that, you know, we, we, you know, I was had a single mother, and she was, we were, you know, poor, and so um, sort of embracing that, you know, kind of where I come from, and the uh, more difficult parts of life, I guess. So, yeah, and uh, and this, I guess, this piece is a little bit of a dreamscape, maybe. Um, mm -hmm referencing memory and um, my imagination. And just to close, before we sort of open up to other questions, I wanted to know, because you, with Valerie's work, she often does, as I mentioned before, photography and other sort of um, less site-specific pieces, so this is a little bit of a departure for her. But for, for you, I think, you're, you're very much invested in, in site specificity, so I wanted to know how you came about that and, and the impulse to want to continue to do that. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels in a way like it kind of chose me. It's, um, I think in relation to space, I, um, like when I have memories or I think about things, it's always like in a specific location. Um, and so, and I don't, I don't know if this has to do with coming to art making a little bit later in life, but I, even when I'm working in my studio, the work often gets embedded in the space, so it's, it's hard to make work in the studio because um, it just I just want to, you know, attach it to the space. So, um, I mean, it has to do with, like, I mean, I just always think about, I can't even start thinking about making a piece until I've seen the actual space. It's just hard for me to get inspired until I have been in the space. I've measured, I've, you know, like, my body in the space has a lot to do with the work. So, yeah. Any questions or comments? Anyone? Is there a specific uh, reason for choosing these plans? Yes, good question. Um, I would say more when I saw the trees. I, I went to um, a local uh, like um, nursery um, south of here, and there they actually had two of these trees on the property, um, and I. I don't know if any, this, the name of the tree is, it's a, the common name is a Milky Way. And it's, they're like, the blooms are just like totally cover the tree. I mean, and, there, and, and there's like a sea of flowers on the ground. It's just, they're amazing. So, I mean, I was just kind of captivated by the beauty and the smell. Um, and I mean, it's a very tropical tree as well. So that's kind of um, that's the reason. Yeah. 
when you actually visit the space, does it um, affect the content that you put inside of it, or is that already kind of predetermined before you go into the space and then figure no, out what that, you want to do I'm, with it? It really develops with the idea from from the space. Um, yeah, each piece is really the materials totally change. Like um, one of the last pieces I did that I met Joanna doing, yeah. it was I um, was doing a residency and I dipped my desk in indigo, so I built this huge vat and had a um, an engine hoist in the space and and actually dipped the desk in indigo. It was done in uh, the financial district of, in Manhattan, so kind of you know references the like like a, a blue pen baking into a white shirt a little bit. Um, so it just depends, yeah, it really depends on the location. I mean, I bring myself to it too, so, you know, like, my experience comes into the piece too, but um, it really depends on the location. Or what was your first site specific installation? My first, um, um, I sort of wound electrical conduit around the space. It was all white, too, so it was sort of like a ghost. Mm -hmm. So that was like the first piece. Much more minimalist looking than this. Much one. more minimal, I think. But I, I think that's also a response, which is why I really love your work so much to the, the place of where you are. And I just want to mention, go back to the, the corporate office that you were in. I mean, that desk was, her studio was in an, like a, an old office building. So like it's, everything is very much about where you are, and it, it's all skyscrapers and hardly any natural light, I find, down there. So I just think that she's so cognizant of everything that's around her in her immediate setting, but also outside of that. Um, so she brings everything to it, um, which I think is really nice and special. So your like, um, site-specific installation usually works with bringing what's outside of the installation inside? Kind of. That's what it sounds often, like. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's more site-related than, um, but yeah, it's... I also wanted to know how much gum was chewed for this. Good um, question. <laughs> and also, sorry, I might be getting ahead of myself, but um, I wanted to know if there was a specific reason for the mound of earth or dirt uh, only being under this plant and not the other one. Um, So there was a lot of gum chewed. Um, what was, type of gum? It's pretty much bubblicious <laughs> bubble gum. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can't even, a countless, countless <laughs> amount of gum. Um, and um, the reason that, I mean, the sort of practical reason, um, although this kind of just worked with the piece, um, I wanted one tree to be fully in and one tree to, um, come into the space, the, for the roots to actually come into the space a little bit. So that tree is fully in that wall, um, and this one, the root base is, is exposed into the space. So yeah. And it's, as you mentioned, a little bit of fantasy, right? So not everything is so much rooted in, in reality. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We'll die. And did you work with the space in between the wall? Well, yeah, the, the plant is coming out there. I had to, you know, I mean, the, the plant is actually in, inside. So there's about 10 inches um, in there. So the bottom, you know, the roots of the plants are actually inside of that. Whereas this element over here is just the steps, whereas the, the whole plant is inside the wall. Have you ever had any encounters with? Um, Installations and then they like, sit on your art or you know, step um, on it. Not sit on it, but step on it. That's always. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, you know, people don't look where they're walking. So, yeah, it, it's going to get stepped on. So, this, that's kind of why I, that's actually part of why I 
some of its past because um, I you know if you stepped up and you really thought you just uh, sort of disappear, not disappear, but become like these black buildings you see on sidewalks, which is black spots everywhere. I also like that you sort of anticipate that that happening, right? So some of these are cast, the flat the flattened ones. So I, I mean I, I love that. I mean I think there's a, a playfulness that, that you're incorporating here, which is nice. And a lot of people have actually commented that the gum sort of emulates the uh, petals, flower petals, so which is why some of them are incorporated with the vegetation. So again, it's a sort of visual push and pull mystery, uh, playing with your perceptions of what is and what isn't. Thank you both so Thank much. You. Yeah. Good job. Yes, thanks. <laughs>